we were a wood and stone people where the tools, utensils, and weapons were made from stone mostly. The stone was extremely important. Many craftsmen in the tribe developed a very a close and wonderful affinity to stone. They could read the stone, so to speak. Anything that was within the environment that had presence, had spirit. I built because I loved it. Uh, some people do stonework, but they're just doing, doing it to get paid, getting up to the top and getting the money and gone, you know. I don't do that way. I'm, I'm doing it to satisfy me, not the money. When I get through, I want to be proud. I want to I wanna look at it and say, you did a good job, Russ. <laughs> it's very artistic. It's, a, it's a, uh, very unique, um, but it has a lot of pride. It, it, uh, uh, it carries on, it's just something that carries on through generation. You can put up the same wall and have a fella join it, and it looks awful. And a man that knows how to join can make that same wall look like a different wall altogether. You can tell the different colors of the stone. Now all the colors of the stone is not naturally colored. It's from time. Time changes it. Um, makes you almost make the sto stones look alive because of the uh, uh, moss, the greenery that grows around it. It collects onto the stone and it changes the color. So it almost makes the stone each year change somewhat and brings a lot of art and a lot of character and beauty out of it. Uh, I never felt a stone that was cold and I never have. On the coldest day, I never felt a stone that was cold. They say stone is cold. I don't, I don't believe it. Never felt it that way. There are many things that are on the reservation. Sometimes uh, for the visionary people, uh, there will be a small vision that comes and, and it goes. And uh, it, it makes you wonder. <laughs>